What is up guys? 70 Savage here coming at you today with a very exciting van project. In fact, this could be considered a van life game changer. Today we are going to be installing Starlink on the top of our van. I'm sure that if you're watching this video, you've probably heard of Starlink by now, but just a brief introduction. Starlink is basically super high speed satellite internet that you can install on a vehicle and use pretty much anywhere. Before Starlink, the best solution for getting internet while you were traveling was using a cell signal booster and then basically tethering to your phone. But Starlink is way better. Just the fact that you do not need to figure out whether or not where you're traveling to is going to have cell service or not and can kind of just go wherever you want and expect to be able to take meetings while you're on the road is an absolute game changer for me. Let's go ahead and dive right in. And before we dive into the van implementation of Starlink, let me show you guys how you would normally install in a house the super, super simple way, because it'll be a lot easier to understand the additional complexities that I added if you understand the baseline installation. So Starlink itself is incredibly simple. It's only three components. It's the router that plugs into the wall, the satellite that you mount on the roof, and then a big long cord that connects the two of them. I already have that installed on my van. Okay, so with that, let me show you guys how I use Starlink in the van. All that I have to do is go to the back of my van, take out my Starlink dish, walk it up to the top of the van, stick it into the mount that we have on the roof, which I will get into more detail about in a second. And then I plug it in to the wire that we've passed through our roof. After that, I come back inside the van, open the control panel, and turn on the Starlink switch. At that point, our Starlink is on, it's running, and I can use it to pull up YouTube and watch videos about how to build vans. So with that, let's dive into the slightly harder part and cover how we actually installed it. So very first step of installing Starlink on the roof of your van, you need to pass the cable through the roof of the van so that you can set the satellite dish up here and plug it in. I do have to give a shout out to the walkable solar roof deck. We just uploaded a video on this. You can find it on the channel. Now I've had to pass a bunch of different cables through the roof of the van since I started building it. And I finally found this solution right here, which I used to pass the single gray satellite dish cable through the roof of the van. I'm probably a little bit more excited than I should be about this little scan strut wire gland, which you can see through the roof deck here. And thankfully I did a little bit more of a detailed recording before I installed it. So I'm gonna roll that now. I'll put a link to these in the description below, but in general, this is how it works. You have this rubber bung, I think they call it, which you drill your own holes into. This one right here, I've drilled myself. The bung goes into the top part of the device and then the top part of this device here mounts onto the bottom part of the device which you use screws to mount directly to the roof of your van and then underneath all that there's this little weather stripping seal thingy that goes underneath it all so at the end of the day you have this four piece mechanism stuck to the roof completely watertight and you can always just unscrew it to add or remove more wires. So this is where you really have to get creative choosing how you wanna mount your Starlink dish. Some people will literally just chop the bottom stem off of the Starlink dish and they will permanently affix it to their vehicle's roof. What this does is prevents the servos inside the dish from being able to tilt the dish to connect to a satellite. And instead it just takes a little bit longer to connect, but it will actually grab a connection to a satellite and you will be able to get internet. In my case, however, I do like having that tilt mechanism because I just feel like it gives me a more stable, consistent connection. And if I have partial coverage over the van, it can still sometimes figure out how to connect to a satellite that's not directly above me. I've basically just purchased this pivot mount directly from Starlink. This is one of the mounting mechanisms that they sell and I've mounted it via two bolts to my roof rack. If you don't have a roof rack, you could probably just mount this straight to the roof of your van. By the way, do not get distracted by this antenna right here. It's completely unrelated to Starlink. This is the old antiquated cell signal booster. The cool thing about this pivot mount is that it pivots. So when I take the Starlink dish down, it's really easy to just fold that down and you can't see it from outside of the van. So for right now, I think this is the best way to mount the Starlink dish. But if you guys have any ideas about how to permanently mount the dish on the roof of a van and still retain the pivoting mechanism, I'd be very interested to hear that. 
leave it in the comments below. And you might be wondering, how did you make it so that you use a 12 volt switch to simply turn Starlink on and off like that? Well, let me go ahead and show you guys. So down here, which is the sub panel for our electrical system, Normally I have this bolted in, but for this demonstration, I do not. You can see on this side of the sub panel cabinet here, we have a bunch of things Velcroed to each other. These top two right here are the two that we're gonna be talking about right now. This one, you guys have already seen, this is the Starlink router. The Starlink router only plugs into 110 power. So basically the power that you have in your house. When you're in a van or an RV or a boat, your power system is not the grid. So you're not getting 110 volt power out of the outlet. What you are getting is whatever DC voltage you're getting out of your battery bank. Ours is a massive 12 volt battery bank. It's over a thousand amp hours of 12 volt batteries. So what you need to do is convert that 12 volt power into 110 volt AC power, the same type that you get in your house for which I use this little miniature 375 watt inverter. And some of you might be wondering, well, why the heck didn't you just plug it into your big ass inverter in the back that you installed in your electrical system? I have a 3000 watt inverter back there. And the answer to that is that it's loud. It generates a ton of heat and it takes a little bit of passive battery draw even when you're not powering anything. Whereas this little miniature 375 watt inverter doesn't really have any of those problems. It does make a little bit of noise and has a little tiny bit of passive draw. But considering that I'm gonna use Starlink a lot of the day, and I only turn that inverter on for big things like turning on the water heater when I wanna take a shower or turning on the microwave when I wanna cook up a fancy meal. I can leave the Starlink on, not have to worry about all the disadvantages of the big inverter, and then I can use the big inverter for all the other stuff. And then what I did with this little 12 volt Starlink switch here is I just wired that to my 12 volt bus bar. I have the inverter always set to on, and then I flip that 12 volt DC switch to basically provide or not provide power to the inverter. The Starlink is on by default whenever it's plugged in. And that ends up being a really, really simple user experience of just turning this switch on and off whenever you want internet. And I know you guys are probably wondering, so I turned off everything else in the van except for the Starlink in the little miniature inverter. And we're only drawing about three and a half to four amps on average. Although this does spike up to like seven, eight, I've seen when it's starting up. Those are DC amps at 12 volts. They are not house amperage. It's gonna draw a lot less house amperage. But even at only seven to eight amps peak, you might be wondering, well, why did you go all the way up to a 375 watt miniature inverter? Why didn't you go for like 150 watt miniature inverter? Answer is I tried. I got this same brand at a 150 watts. And I don't know if the thing was just defective or if it straight up couldn't power the Starlink, but it wasn't working and I wanted internet this weekend. So I just decided to go with the safe route and get the 375 watt version. 150 should work in theory. I'm not really sure why it didn't. Alrighty, that pretty much sums up Starlink in a van. This technology is absolutely game changing for traveling in a van or an RV in a boat. I do hope that you learned something from this video and most of all that you actually enjoyed it. If you did, we are constantly making videos about how to build and travel around in camper vans. Although admittedly, I haven't been doing that much traveling recently. If you wanna see more of that content, slap the subscribe button below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.